In the past year, maybe year and a half during the pandemic, I've never seen more guys coming to me on SARMs than ever. And I've been around SARMs since Ostrin came out, 2008, 2009, with a lot of experience. So I think what's happening is that during the pandemic, guys were cut off in the gym all around the world. So they had to rely only on uh, agents, if you will, they can get online. We all know you can get steroids online, but most guys, I think, get steroids from trusted sources, right? Kind of the bro stuff, you know, bro science and the, the gym guys. That's certainly how I used to do it back in the 80s and 90s and stuff. So, SARMs, guys, I know you've been following me and my thoughts on SARMs in prior videos. You can see that, but I really changed my mind on it. You know, I had a whole approach of kind of like a let's wait and see. I mean, these are scientific agents, but there's really no data science conclusive on it. And it seems like they're amazing. They could really work. So I kind of took a watchful waiting perspective, but I've changed my mind on that. Now I've seen so many guys coming in with devastation on the labs, you know, and I'm going to talk about that and I can even show you guys the labs and it's absolutely unbelievable. And I just wonder, is it worse than real steroids? And you guys are going to give your comments, please. So SARMs versus real steroids, right? Steroids have been around for whew, 50 years, you know, I mean, I'm 57, started steroids back in the eighties late 80s and 90s and stuff, you know, so we had Tass and D-Ball, Winstrol V, Anavar, all that stuff, right? Still around today, but it's more complex. Young guys are using SARMs. A lot of you young guys, you know, think it's an alternative to using steroids and you won't get shut down. So on the lab aspect, you should see what I see, man. It's just unreal, you know, with the liver function. Quick pause for a second here, guys. Chances are you're watching this video, you're on a little testosterone, maybe even some steroids and your blood pressure is just not right. Maybe you're hypertensive. Very important, guys. You gotta monitor your own blood pressure. You gotta take matters into your own hands now. So check out this monitor. It's a whole monitor. This is the one I recommend for most of my patients for many years, Omron Platinum. If your arm is a little big, even 16 inches or bigger, you're gonna need the big cuff. So get that on the side. Guys, go home, take your blood pressure in the morning and at night. Put it together, document it, research it. I'm gonna help you with other videos. And then you need to make adjustments in your life to keep your blood pressure perfect. And if you do that, I promise you, you're gonna stay stronger and healthier for more time and a better quality of life. Oh, you should see what I see, man. It's just unreal, you know, with the liver function and with a lot of different chemistries being affected, not to mention on, but also in the post period, even you know six months or even sometimes up to a year later, or just a couple cycles of SARMs. I don't know if it's happening on one cycle, but it kind of like steroids, you know, but it seems like they're more harsh guys. I think they're more harsh, but there's a guy on the app and we've had multiple men on the anabolic doc app that are in there with us, me and Nate and one young man, I think he's 18, maybe 17 actually, and he had two or three cycles of SARMs. He was massively shut down. And I, I was able to send him to Dr. Lipschultz in Texas. That's a colleague of mine. He's another expert in steroids. So any of you guys that were on the app during that time, you know, you were, you were in that discussion room when we had that going on. And that guy, I think he's getting help. So that's pretty cool. So the devastation also, most importantly, you guys, I know you, you, you young guys want to hear this is the hypothalamus pituitary gonadal axis and that you get shut down, right? And you hear all this stuff like, is it true, is it not? And can you use post-cycle therapy and can that actually remediate that to some degree? And it's very interesting. There's no data for this at all. So it brings me to a story, guys, where back in 2010, 11, when I was writing for Muscular Development as the anabolic doc, back when we had magazines, right? It's crazy how things have changed. And I had a power lifter down south that was on test. He was just blasting and cruising. It's been going on for 20 years. And he said, Doc, he called me up and he goes, here's what I want to do. And started running, instead of adding oral anadrol, or he liked D-ball and anadrol on top of test, he'd take test 
from like 250, because that's what guys used to do, one cc of sustenon back in the day, even some of the big guys, some of the st strongest powerlifters in the 1970s and 80s, they just, they cruise, blasting and cruising, they'd cruise on sustenon, a cc or so, and then they would blast up to add orals, like D-ball and Anadrol, right? That's about it, that's pretty much what they used to do. And um, he said, instead of using the D-ball or the Anadrol, I'm gonna try this stuff called Osterin. So he did it, you know, I said, dude, I, you, you can please, sir, you know, don't, I don't know what this stuff is. I didn't, I had no idea then. And he did it and we checked his labs and his labs, guys, they looked just as bad on the HDL, the LDL and his liver function. And I could show you that on guys on SARMs today and versus using other drugs that he never actually checked his labs on D-ball or Anadrol on top of bumping up the test. And his libido was always good because again, he's living on testosterone. So from that point on, he kind of walked away and just said, I don't want to do the SARMs again. He actually bombed out of the meat. He bombed out of the meat and he said, this, this SARM, this is again, you know, guys, this is like 12 years ago. He's like, I don't know about SARMs, man. So I know the big power lifters and stuff. These guys may use, you know, the gamble and stuff and add on stuff, but I just know what's going on. The guys are still doing tests and steroids. And, you know, so my opinions change, guys. Here's my opinion now. You know, I don't need any more data that I see. It's all anecdotal, but God, I've seen, I don't know, maybe 2,000 guys on SARMs, you know, in 10 years. And, and again, the last year, it's been crazy. More and more guys on SARMs, young guys, you know, teenagers up to like mid, late 20s. It seems like you guys stay away from steroids and you think the SARMs are gonna start off. And I'm not criticizing that. I'm just saying that's, that's the behavior. So I think SARMs are gonna be more toxic guys than steroids. That's my opinion. Certainly the SARMs that are being used, right? Rad, Leganrol, um, Osterin, um, you know, these it's some of the top SARMs, right? Some of the big SARMs that guys are using, the most common ones. And when you look at the toxicities on, I think that guys get shut down. I think guys, I think my opinion is that I'm not giving a blessing on steroids. I never can, I never will. But I just kind of wonder if guys are gonna run some steroids, like it would be a great study to look at a head to head, some test, testosterone esters, maybe versus Anadrol or D-Ball by itself, maybe Anavar versus the real SARMs. Not to mention looking for outcomes for the labs, because I mean, the, the, the beautiful thing is that guys really don't get hurt when they start off the stuff initially, the hurt comes later. And again, of course, there are guys that can get hurt. Be very careful. And the most important thing is you get shut down. And that's why I'm doing this, man, sitting here up in Vermont, man, just one of my favorite places, you guys, and I want you guys to really trust me and understand that I'm not hating on anything, man, and I'm not, I don't wanna be known as, uh, you know, the Debbie Downer or, you know, the bullshit doc or the, the, the scare doc. The scare, I'm, you know, some guys think I'm the scare doc. I don't know, guys, I did steroids back in the day, loved it, absolutely loved it so much, always scared, because I'm kind of like a hypochondriac. Always for my heart, you can see, that's, you know, I'm glad I was like that way, you know? It did protect me. And, but because of, I did steroids in my 25 to 28, 30, I had to go on testosterone the rest of my life. And I'm here, and I'm not hating on that, guys. I'm just saying, if you don't, if you don't want to be on testosterone, and, and everyone knows this, right? But maybe there's you young guys, right? And some really kind of newbie guys out there, and you're checking this out for the first time, brothers. You know, it is what it is. I mean, like the health consequences take years, right? But up front, are you gonna get shut down and have to be on testosterone? You can just join the club, man, of millions and millions of guys, and I'm not being sarcastic. So that's my new opinion on SARMs, guys. And thank you so much for watching this full video and just really giving comments. So bleed it out, guys. Let's get the comments. I really gotta hear it, and the community needs to hear it, because, I mean, SARM is versus steroids. We're gonna have to do something on that ethically and academically because it's gonna have to be done. And um, that's scientific uh, literature, and that's gonna be a head-to-head. -head. And I think I'm gonna have to do that one day. But in the meantime, guys, 
please thank you so much for trusting me and just be safe. And you want to stay strong and healthy. You guys are young men, man. Young men, we're, we're beasts, right? And we don't really think of this stuff. So I really appreciate you guys are considering, you know, not to use any of this stuff at all. If you haven't used it and you're doing your research because there's no safe way to do it and not end up potentially getting shut down. Okay, not gonna have a heart attack up front, not gonna have a blood clot, you know, hair loss and all this other stuff is gonna happen, bitch tits and, you know, even on SARMs, guys get gynecomastia. It's kind of interesting, so how selective is it? Or what kind of doses are we using with these SARMs and what are these SARMs, really? So, all right guys, boom, thank you so much hanging out with me up in the stream, man, up here in Vermont. Thank you.